Their thoughts are fixed in me, their lives are wholly given up to me, enlightening each other and ever conversing of me, they are contented and rejoicing in me. These are all such beautiful verses. What are these people like? They are Machidaha. Their thoughts are fixed on the Supreme Soul. Maitam Yeshante Machidaha. And Madhgata Praha. Their lives are wholly given up to the Supreme Soul. What do these devotees do whose thoughts are fixed on God and their lives are in God? Sri Krishna says that they lighten each other and converse with each other about the Supreme Soul. Buddha Yanta means to give wisdom to each other. But what wisdom do they give to each other? They speak to each other about the Supreme Soul. When you get two wise people, and this is what they speak about, they enlighten each other and speak to each other about the Supreme Soul. Sri Krishna said that these devotees are contented and rejoicing in Him. A devotee never has a frown on her face. Sri Krishna says this in the Gita that a devotee is always laughing, dancing and singing. The devotee always has a state where she is contented and rejoicing. A devotee never complains and moans about life. The word, God has twisted the meaning of a devotee. When people complain and moan that everything is ruined, everything has gone wrong, that people get sport these days, that nobody is going to the temple these days, and that nobody is worshipping God these days, then other people say that they have become devotees. In reality, a devotee never complains and moans about anything. Sri Krishna says clearly in this verse that devotees are contented and rejoice in the Supreme Soul. Devotees think that whatever is there is beautiful, that is what devotees have. Why? What do devotees do? Four things have been said in this verse. Machitaha. A devotee's thoughts are fixed on the Supreme Soul. Madgara Pranha, their lives are wholly given up unto the Supreme Soul. Pudayanti, they enlighten each other. And Kathayanti, they are ever conversing of the Supreme Soul. If a person's thoughts are always fixed on the Supreme Soul, then can they ever be sad? When you go to a good cinema and your thoughts are fixed on the film, they have so much fun for three hours. You say that it was such a nice film. If you get so much fun when your thoughts are fixed on the cinema, then how much fun when a person has a thought fixed on God? This is Machitaha, having one's thoughts fixed on the Supreme Soul. When can one's thoughts be fixed on the Supreme Soul? The very first and last thing needed is that thoughts can only be fixed when there is love and where there is intimacy. Thoughts cannot be fixed when there is no love and no intimacy. One should create love and intimacy towards the Lord. Only then can a person become Machitaha, having one's thoughts fixed on the Supreme Soul. There must be intimacy, only then can thoughts become fixed. Secondly, one must be Madgata Pranaha, the lives are wholly given up to the Supreme Soul. This is the unvital as it is called in homeopathy. The life energy and the vital energy should be orientated on the Supreme Soul. The principle is such that when one performs an action, then the cause will remain there. We have understood cause and action, which is one principle in Vedanta. This is another principle in Vedanta. Where one performs an action, then the cause will remain there, but it is not as if the cause is there and action will be there. For example, the action is a person herself and causes a means. I write in another way. A secretary will always go where a boss goes because the secretary or race follows the boss like the boss's shadow where the boss's bags and the boss's important items. The boss just looks at the secretary and the secretary gives the boss the item. When the boss is there, then the secretary will be there. The boss is the action and the secretary is the instrument. But where the secretary who is the instrument is somewhere, then it does not mean that the boss who is action will be there. Wherever the boss goes for his business physics, then the, in, the secretary will always follow the boss. But when I said that the business is finished, it is 8 p.m. and the office is closed. Now the boss goes to his house because now he is no more the boss, he is a husband or father or son. The boss has now finished. The instrument may go alone, for example, when the boss orders the secretary to perform a task um, somewhere else. Of course, uh, the instrument can be sold without action, but where the action is, then the instrument must be there. Thought are the instrument if you look at one way. If the thoughts which are the instrument are fixed on the Supreme Soul, then the Soul, which is the action, is wholly given up on the Supreme Soul. When we are so surrendered to the feet of the Supreme Soul, then the thoughts, the life, everything else becomes surrendered to, the, to God. The Gopi in the Shrim Bhagavad, the Gopi sing, Chayati Redikam Tanmana Vaja Chayat Indira Chasvadatrahi Dear Lord, your bath in Vraj has made it extremely fortunate. That is why Lakshmi, the goddess of fortune, always resides here. The gopis ask Shri Krishna, O oh Lord, give us a vision of yourself. The gopis could not live without Shri Krishna. And in the Gopi Gita, they do ta asava. The only reason why we're living is because our lives are not in our hands. Asava means lives in the plural. It comes from the word asu, also meaning life. Their lives are in the Supreme Soul. Then they see Tvam Vijin Bhakti. It is not possible to live in your absence. It is not possible to live in the absence of the Supreme Soul and it is not possible to die either because our lives are in the hands of the Supreme Soul. What then can one do? And how can the time pass? 
That is why the Gopis say that they think only of Shri Krishna. They are thinking about the quality of Shri Krishna. Even if Shri Krishna says, Madhgata Praha, their lives are wholly given up to the Supreme Soul. Their lives are in the Supreme Soul. How can they live? We get a very beautiful synthesis of the Gita and the Gopi Git of the Srimad Bhagat over here. The devotee's thoughts are in the Lord, and the devotee's lives are given up to the Lord. How then can the devotees live? How can the times pass? Ramun Jajaji said that they tell each other about the experiences they have of God. They tell others about the quality of the Supreme Soul that they have experienced. One devotee says, I experience this quality of the Supreme Soul, and another devotee says, I experience this quality of the Supreme Soul in my life. This is Bodh Yantaha, enlightening each other. Shri Krishna says, Kata Yantaha, conversing about me after Bodh Yantaha, enlightening each other. Therefore, Bodh Yantaha, enlightening each other, is not just to say, but to enlighten. If I tell another person about qualities of God, then I have experience, uh, that I experience, and the other person will get inspiration. This is Bodh Yantaha, enlightening each other. Then there is Kata Yantaha, conversing about me. If we wish to separate Kata Yantaha, conversing about me, and Buddha Yantaha, enlightening each other, metaphysically, then Kata Yantaha, conversing about me, is only that which is known, whereas Bodh Yantaha, enlightening each other, is that which is experienced. Madhyani Dhirani Ramanani Pramanija Kata Yantaha After reading the Shemit Bhagat, I can tell you the 10th Kato has the Leela, Divine Gifts of Shri Krishna. This is Kata Yantaha, conversing about me. But if I have experienced the quality of Shri Krishna, if I speak about the quality, then it is Bodhi Yadaha, to enlighten. Anuras Chinta Yantama Meja Paripas Retesha Niti Yutanam Rog Shemam Bahamiham That is why there is a difference in the quality between the Kata Yantaha, conversing about me, and Bodhi Yadaha, enlightening each other. The scriptures explain it very well, that talks of the law are the same. The subject is one, God. Can one have an interest in this? Yes. How can one have an interest in this? The scriptures give us an example. If there is a person who is rakish, then he gets so much talk, fun in, from listening to a talk of a woman. He gets so much interest out of this. If you look at it in one way, then it's the same. He has experienced it 17 times and he will describe the beautiful woman or an object again and again. The rakish person gets so much fun in this. He keeps listening to it with concentration. If a rakish person is listening about bodily pleasure with so much interest, then can a devotee not talk about the Supreme Soul is divine with the same amount of this? Of course the devotee can. A person who has this much interest in the Lord and finds the Lord interesting each and every day, as all his skepticism fall away with the experiences that she gets from our devotees. The scriptures give a very brief example that when there is one lamp lighting, the light that comes from that lamp gives light to everybody around the lamp and the light falls everywhere. But if you look at it closely, then there's darkness underneath the lamp. The lamp gives light to everyone, but there is darkness underneath the lamp. There is something that is left and something that is missing, and yet, there is nothing that the lamp can do about it. The darkness just remains there. Some doubt or the other is there. In the same way, whenever a wise person or a devotee is alone, then a doubt or some darkness may come, but if you place two other lamps next to it, then the light will increase, and what these two lamps will do, mutually will be able to get rid of the darkness underneath each other. When two devotees sit next to each other, then it is called Parasvaram Bodhiyataha, mutually enlightening each other. The darkness just does not remain underneath the lamps. Because of one lamp, the darkness underneath another lamp goes away, and because of the other lamp, the darkness of this lamp goes away. This is Parastam Bodhayantaha, mutually enlightening each other. The same thing happens to devotees. They also converse with each other about the Supreme Soul. Shri Krishna says in this verse that such devotees are contented and rejoicing in Him. It is a very wonderful state to be contented and rejoicing in the Supreme Soul. I feel that this is the ideal state of the Gita, and that an ideal devotee to the Gita should be like this. Contented and rejoicing in the Supreme Soul. A devotee of Gita is contented and never perturbed. A devotee of Gita is not one who gets frustrated with other people, and a devotee of the Gita is not one who gets frustrated to other people. A devotee of the Gita has a state of being contented and rejoicing in the Supreme Soul. What state is this? A devotee of the Gita is not one who keeps others hungry. The ideal devotee of the Gita is contented and is always rejoicing in the Supreme Soul. A devotee is never attracted to sandals, a devotee is never frustrated, and a devotee is never oppressed. Devotees are never like this. Devotees are always contented and never perturbed. Devotees always have a look of contentment on their faces, and the reason why there are looks of contentment on their faces is because their hearts are always rejoicing in the Supreme Soul. Their hearts are rejoicing in the Lord, and that is why there is a look of contentment in their faces. Ramajaraji says that speakers are delighted by their own speech when they speak about the Supreme Soul, but it is spontaneous and without any ulterior motive. They do not even know where these words are coming from. In reality, this is the characteristic of descriptions of the Lord. 
One does not need to find words or to place words because the Lord sitting inside is calling the speaker and telling the speaker what to say. The Lord tells the speaker that place my message to people this way. That is why the speaker has this contentment. The speaker has contentment of being a medium of the Lord. The speaker knows that the Lord is residing inside her. The speaker feels that I have become a medium for the Lord. And this is the contentment of the speaker. Because they're content, they're always rejoicing in the Lord. Raman Shaji continues to say that the listeners too feel the speech to be unsurpassingly and uncomparably dear to them, thus they live in bliss. The speaker has bliss in speaking, and the listener has bliss in listening. In this world, people do not like to say anything without a degree of selfishness, and people do not like to listen to anything without a degree of selfishness. But when the Lord is being spoken about, then the situation of speakers is such that they have no element of selfishness, and yet they feel like speaking, and the situation of listeners is that there is no element of selfishness, but they cannot be satisfied without listening to it. One should not believe that if someone says something good, then people will listen. A father says so many nice things to his son, but does the son listen to this? The father knows that he is saying all of this for his son's good and his son's welfare, but the son is just listening. Why do people like listening to talks about the Lord? Because they get bliss out of it. Shabbatology even says that the speaker feels contented and delighted while talking to the listener about the Lord as though they have met with their beloved. Tushanti parito sham upyan upanti cha ramati cha ratin cha rapno vanti para sangitya iva. When a person meets his or her lover, then they get so much bliss, the same amount of bliss comes while speaking about the Lord and while listening about the Lord. That is what Shri Krishna says that they are contented and rejoice in Him. When one is next to the beloved, then does any tension remain? The tension goes away. If there is any tension while being close to one's beloved, then consider that there is something lacking in that love. What is the need for tension? What is the need for tension? What is the need for worry? The whole world is forgotten in the presence of one's beloved. This is a sign of love, true love. We only do body love, and that is, and we know about the state of body love, but there are limits to this. For example, the husband asks the wife why she is looking tired today, and the wife asks the husband why he is looking tired today. This is where body love starts from. But divine love has no tiredness at all. And even if it is there, then in the presence of the beloved, one cannot remember any worries, one cannot remember any tiredness, and one cannot remember the world. You become away from the world. This is being the world, yet being away from the world. This state is that of contentment and rejoicing in the Lord. One is contented, and that is why they are always rejoicing in the Lord. A devotee may be running around the world and doing everything, but the devotee has no complaints. A devotee is not someone that is frustrated and uh, sad, uh, sad with life. Khalid Gibra says, keep me away from the religion that does not love. If a school of philosophy tells you that you should always be serious, then you should stay away from it. Whenever you go to discourses and you see that people look so serious as if when they came through the door, they were given a full food of medicine. They are sitting down so serious. When people ask them that they, uh, that they say that it's because there's a very big philosophical discussion taking place. This is not necessary. Can a person not be a philosopher while laughing and playing? If the Supreme himself is so delighted, then do not one receive the words of the Supreme so with delight? There is no requirement to create tension. Look at the effects of the words in this verse. Dushanti Jaramanti Cha, being content and delighted in the Lord. When you count the words Dushanti Jaramanti Cha, being content and delighted in the world, uh, by in, delighted in the Lord, so by Shri Krishna in this verse, they get a type of bliss while chanting this. Arjun may have had the question in his mind that, Lord, let us say that devotees reach the state where they had a thought fixed in you, their lives wholly given up to you, they lie to each other about these experiences and ever converse with you, and they reach the state where they are contented in rejoicing you, what then happens? God explains the answer to this question in the next verse, the 10th verse of the 10th chapter of the Gita.